Turn off your mind, relax, and float down the stream. It is not dying, it is not dying. Lay down all thoughts, surrender to the void. It is shining, it is shining. You may see the meaning of within. It is being. It is Reverend Kit Holmes, need I say more? <laughs> I love you. <laughs> thank you, Carol. Thank you, Roland. Thank you, Brad. And thank you, Ernie. And thank you, John Lennon and Paul McCartney. If you were not aware, maybe you were. Um, that is a song called Tomorrow Never Knows. It was off the Revolver album. And if you look it up, it will not sound anything like what we just did. Um, there's this, this raucous droning drums, sitars, you know, if you're familiar with it. So play with it. Um, I redid that song in that arrangement. Um, it was a, it was a, came through one day, I was looking for, I found the words. And I liked the words, but I didn't like the arrangement for what I wanted to use it for. And so I so said, why don't I just rearrange it? And it ended up on the, um, on the bridge CD, and, um, which I have out there. So what I'd like to invite you to do today, and thank you for that meditation, Anne, and, and for your service. Um, We're done with the holiday, almost done with the holiday weekend, and busyness, and cookouts, and 
I had my, uh, my year's supply of potato salad on the 4th, so um, my annual portion. Um, and there's been busyness and holiday and things, and I don't have to tell you what's going on in the world. I do not. And what I thought today is where I needed to get back to this week was remembering. I'll let you fly over. Something that I talked a little bit about last week was grounding ourselves in love, grounding ourselves in that place of knowing and trusting that there is something greater that we cannot see yet happening. And so I brought that song in today to help you open a little bit more from the meditation. And I'm going to keep us in a meditative state today, if you're okay with that. Just kind of the let go, the release, stay grounded. I know many of you are familiar with, with um, Richard Rohr in the Center for Action and Contemplation. And I just saw this last night, as of course always happens. And there is an author named Sarah Bessie who um, wrote this piece, and it showed up in, in what I read yesterday in the, the um, summation of the week's posts from, um, from Richard Rohr and the Center for Action and Contemplation. So I invite you to just kind of take this in. I'm going to do some readings. Um, I'm going to read some Ernest Holmes, and then we're going to do a little bit of a meditation to just kind of let things, let us get regrouped and regrounded. And what uh, Sarah Bessie says, she names the need to be for something and not merely against what is wrong. Imagining and contending for what you hope for in this world is one of the hardest and kindest paths I've discovered out there. In the midst of all of this, don't forget to imagine something better. Don't forget to dream of what could be possible, and don't forget to live into those hopes with faithfulness. Move in that direction, especially when all you know is not this. If it helps, sometimes I've thought of this as the rhythm of turning away and then turning toward, almost like a beautiful dance. We turn away from those things we're against and toward the hopeful future we imagine. In a purposeful movement, we turn away from the practices or beliefs or habits that consume us, threaten us, reduce us, and distract us. And then we turn toward what brings flourishing goodness and truth to us. Turn away, yes. Turn toward. What we turn toward should reorient us to the world in a posture of love and joy and service. It can be a simple rhythm to begin with. Turning away from spaces and social media that have become toxic for you. And turning toward inviting a lonely neighbor over for tea. Turning away from voices that bring shame and guilt to you or others, and turning toward voices that preach freedom and wholeness and love. Or turning away from shrinking back and shutting up to keep the peace. Turning toward owning your voice, your body, your experiences with boldness. Turning away from gossip and petty nitpicking, turning toward language of blessing. Begin with against, and keep going until you find your for. It's an act of defiant faith. It will give you something to lean into. It will give you a path to follow. What I love and what came up so instantly from this was this is exactly what unity teaches. This is what new thought teaches. My minister's listserv in Centers for Spiritual Living, um, so many of us are, we read Richard Rohr, and somebody posted this yesterday, and we were all like, that's what we do. That's what we teach. Ernest Holmes, who is the founder of Science of Mind, there is that phrase that we learn in school, and we practice it, and we practice it, and we practice it, and we hear it often, and we practice it when we forget that we need to practice it. 
and it is before something and against nothing. And so, well, how do we do that? That's exactly what she just talked about. We are so focused on what we are for that what we are against will naturally fall away. And it sounds a whole lot easier said than done, doesn't it? Because we are conditioned to stay alert to the bad, to the things we don't want, to the things that frighten us. And we see again and again and again, and we are so intelligent and we are so advanced, and especially when we have so much access to so much information and technology that we recognize that Madison Avenue and politicians, since, and, and not just Madison Avenue in modern times, but since the beginning of time, we hear that phrase that fear is indeed a powerful motivator. And so it has been used and it is being used to keep us separate, divided, warring, in conflict, not enoughness. I have some judgment around people that use it intentionally. I have some judgment. And when I look at what I am for, and I stay focused on that, that diminishes, that falls away a little bit more. So, contemplative Christianity, the true Christian, the true Christ, true, true Christ mind, that was the teaching, that is the teaching of focusing our attention, our consciousness on love, focusing it on the good that we are surrounded with, the infinite good that we are surrounded with. And sitting in this room, all we have to do is look outside the window and see the infinite abundance and beauty of nature that we don't ever have to say, I'm not worthy to look at that tree. I'm not worthy to breathe the air or see that blue sky or go and look at the bay or swim in that water. I'm not worthy. We don't ever do that. It is there for us for the taking in every moment. And it doesn't go away just because we are going through this incredible human consciousness evolution right now. And that's what I see it as. We are evolving at a pace we, well, we've never seen it in our lifetimes. And that is the nature of God. Life isn't always, is always in favor of more life. The nature around us is not stagnant. We are not built to be stagnant. We are built to be creative, to be expressing, to expand, to evolve every single day, every single moment. Our bodies change every single moment. Every cell in our body is always, they're dying off and they're being regenerated. We are not meant to sit comfortably tied up in fear. It's an oxymoron, isn't it? Fear is a familiar place. It might really not feel good at all, but it's familiar. And there are many vis different versions of that saying that uh, uh, to remain tight in the bud, the fear keeps us from blooming. When the pain of staying stagnant or staying still or saying the same, it becomes greater than the fear, the perceived fear of changing. That is when we will change. We are being drop kicked into sh some big change right now. But we have amazing tools at our disposal. We have this teaching. We have this consciousness. What I love so much about this reading 
from this author, from Sarah Bessie, and the messages that were swirling yesterday saying, this is what we teach. This is consciousness. We know that we are creative. What we think about, we bring about. That is a basic unity, new thought teaching. It sounds great. It's a great little rhyme. In the youth programs, they teach them what we think about, we bring about. But when you sit with it for a minute and really ponder that, contemplate that, the power in that, it is not only powerful in like, wow, I could actually maybe do some things like the master teacher said we can do and more. But the flip side of that is, oh my goodness, I am now responsible for my happiness. I am now responsible for my peace and my abundance and my prosperity and the love in my life and the success in my life. I am responsible for that. I am responsible for whether I see the infinite abundance in the world or whether I shut it off and say, somebody else is trying to take something from me. It's powerful stuff. I think you know that. And I think that's why so many people in this teaching are here because it's like, oh, I see the answer. I see hope. I have hope. And oh my God, it scares me to do that, to take a step, to open the door, the door that has always been cracked, the windows that are always open for us, the doors for us to walk through. Because we forget that at the core, God is all there is. And it looks messy, and it looks difficult, and it feels scary, and it feels really hard. And when we step back, turn off your thoughts, relax, float downstream, lay down all thoughts, surrender to the void, the void which is not void at all. Yes, there was a little medicine involved in the writing of that song. There was some experimentation. But at the heart of that song, it was about meditation. It was about letting go. It was about finding that center that is centered in the one. And we've often heard that too. It doesn't matter how you get there, just get there, right? Whether it's sitting under a tree, a Bodhi tree perhaps whether it's floating on the water, whether it's sitting on a meditation cushion, maybe it's, maybe it's practicing yoga, it doesn't matter. As long as we intend and have the willingness to go within and then the willingness to let it all go. So let's let it all go. I'm going to read you some, as I said, some Ernest Holmes because I found... Uh, some back-to-back -back meditations that, that uh, were written almost, uh, almost now 100 years ago. So I invite you to get comfortable. Put your feet on the floor. Take some deep breaths. And just allow these words to just kind of roll over, get in where they need to get in. This first one is called, I allow myself to dip deeply into my divine nature. He says, this meditation is built from the idea that each one of us has within themselves a deeper nature, and of course, this deep, deeper nature being an eternal unity with God or with the living spirit is more than we are. It is where the beingness of us, or the nature of us, merges into the being of God. So as we dip deeply into our divine natures, let us realize that entering the secret presence of this tabernacle of God, we will, like the pilgrims of old, have shed that which does not belong to the kingdom of good. We must deliberately drop that which would hurt. We cannot enter this gate of good with a sword in our hands. 
So we let go of everything and turn to that divine depth within our own nature, wherein the Spirit of God, the Spirit of love and the Spirit of peace, dwells with calm serenity. We withdraw into that place within us which has never been hurt, nor has ever been sick, has always and forever lived in divine and eternal peace, the kingdom of God which is good. And this inner kingdom within is all peace, all power, all perfection. We drop all hate, all fear, all animosity, and all resentment. We cast out our consciousness, cast out of our consciousness every doubt and every sense of uncertainty. We know that we are entering into that atmosphere of wholeness, of happiness, and completion where there is no fear, no doubt, no uncertainty, no lack, and no want. Here is wholeness, perfection, peace, power, beauty, love, supply, and life. We know that the abundance of this life is showered upon us, that we are guided and guarded into right action, into right decision, daily, hourly, minute by minute. This principle of intelligence directs us. The presence of love warms us, the peace of God covers us, and we are led into the pathway of this peace, into the knowledge of this perfection. We are conscious of the indwelling God, and we are conscious that this indwelling God is filling and instantly, instantly renewing our bodies, absolutely eliminating from us whatever there is that does not belong. It is coordinating every function, every organ, every action and reaction. The circulation, the assimilation, the elimination, making it perfect. The life principle of every part of our being is perfect and harmonious and now functions perfectly in us. The whole order of discord is changed into the natural order of harmony and wholeness. And we let that divine power be exactly what it is in us. We are no longer afraid, for love casts out all fear. Our faith destroys all fear. We awake from the dream of fear to the vision of reality where there is no shadow of which to be afraid. We awake from the dream of lack and want and unhappiness to the knowledge of harmony, abundance, and peace. We now let go of everything and enter into a state of peace. We know the Spirit of God is within us, the living Spirit Almighty of that God which is infinite, perfect, and complete, never needed anything, never had any trouble, never could destroy. The God who never operated against itself, who never condemned itself. The spirit that fashions each of us from its own being. All in all, we know this God omnipresent, full, and free, one with every pathway trod our immortal destiny. That infinite wholeness is perfect peace within us. That infinite intelligence is working through us and our affairs. Our thought is inspired, guided, governed, and directed by divine wisdom. That infinite wholeness is the circulation of ideas, of intelligence, wisdom, truth, and life. It is the elimination of every conception of confusion. 
It is the assimilation of that which is whole, happy, and perfect. The divine intelligence is government, is the government of our affairs. I'll read that again. The divine intelligence is the government of our affairs. Each has within themselves this guide to truth, to reason, to beauty, to right action, to certainty, and to peace. So I invite you to take a deep breath. If you want to keep your eyes closed, that's great. And as you take your next, next deep breath in, I invite you to bring to mind someone who you love wholeheartedly, a person or a being, a spouse, a child, a sibling, a parent, a friend, a pet. Let's go ahead and bring that being to mind. And it can be someone who may not even be on this physical plane anymore, and that's okay. See the energy of a smile within them. Allow yourself to smile when you think of them. Picture them fully. Breathe the joy, the love, and feeling your heart expanding, opening, and warming. And if you feel so inclined, you can go ahead and place your hands on your heart as you feel it expand. Notice the rise and fall of your chest as you breathe. Just breathe normally. You don't have to go deep. Hold this feeling of openness, of love, of care, and compassion, and joy. Hold that right there. Acknowledge how much love is there. Really take that in. Allow yourself to feel the expansiveness of that love. You are capable of feeling that level of love because you are that level of love. The very center of your being is love. Imagine that love as a beautiful, brilliant, warm light. Feel that love light growing brighter, more brilliant, and allow that feeling of comfort, that feeling of joy to expand. Recognize that because you can feel this love, recognize that you are loved. You are loving and you are lovable because you are love. No matter what has come before, you are love. No matter what is happening in the world right now, you are love. No matter what is to come, you are still love. And imagine that love with every breath. Keep, it keeps expanding. It keeps growing. It keeps radiating. Bring it in from the top of your head as even more light and more love and let it surround you. Let it enfold you. Bring it into the heart space from your head, around your shoulders, wrapping around your torso like a sweet, sweet, sweet gentle hug.
And imagine that light going down through your torso, down through your hips, down through your legs, to the soles of your feet, grounding into earth, to Mother Earth. And then let's bring it back up from your feet, back up through your feet, through your legs, your ankles, your knees, back up through your hips, through your torso, right there into that beautiful, beautiful center of your heart. And continue to bring it in from your head, everything gathering right there at the center of your being, the center of your torso, like a glowing sphere. Watch it get bigger, brighter, more radiant. And now with your hands, imagine scooping that from that sphere or holding that ball and then sending it gently out with your hands. Imagine it like you're, you're blowing on a dandelion or maybe blowing bubbles gently, but just releasing it, sending it out, not just to this room, filling this room with that, but then sending it outside the walls into this city and with every breath, sending it out into the state, into nature, into that beautiful sky. And with every breath, continue to send it out across this continent and everyone and everything that occupies it, that lives on it or in it. and expand that beautiful love light surround the entire globe and everyone and everything that fills it. Send it to the atmosphere, send it to the oceans, send it beyond that healing, loving, beautiful, unconditional light. Continue to just send it out, swirl it around you. There is nothing blocking it, nothing impeding it, nothing stopping it from reaching it, its intended destination. and know and affirm that there is no limit to the amount of love that we can send to something that we are for. No matter what has come before, we can be for love and only love and therefore against nothing. No matter what is happening right now, we can be for love and only love and therefore against nothing. No matter what may come in the future, when we are for love and only love, there is no need to be against anything. Go ahead and take a deep breath. And let's go ahead and take another one. And notice that no matter how much love you give, there is still an ever-growing, brilliant radiance in and around you and through you. You carry this inexhaustible supply wherever you go. And you can trust that whatever you send out is always returned multiplied. It can't help but fill, spill over to fill every dark corner of fear or doubt or worry. Living from this place of love allows us to know and absolutely know that all is indeed well. 
when we surrender to the power and presence of infinite love that lives within us, all is indeed well. So let's take a deep breath and gently imagine that our breath is grounding our energy. We can send that energy through our bodies, back through our hips, down to the ground, just to pull that energy tight. We're not letting it go. We're just grounding it. Gently bring your attention to the chair that you're sitting on. Feel your feet on the floor. You can go ahead, if you haven't already, place your hands at your side or on your lap. Wiggle your fingers. Feel your back against the chair. Begin to notice the sounds in and outside of the room. And just keep breathing gently. Notice the temperature of the air on your skin. And become aware, aware once again of the people surrounding you in this space. When you feel ready, you can stay with your eyes closed or not. Entirely up to you. When you feel ready, you can open your eyes and be in here in this moment, in this space. What I affirm for us in this letting go is that when we allow ourselves to surrender the moment to the power and presence of God, we can't help but know that all is well. And this is my invitation to you that throughout your day, you take some time to surrender. Let it all go. Turn it over to that power and presence of love that is within you, the power and presence of joy and peace that is within you. We are here as love to express love in everything that we do. And the world very, very much needs us right now to be in love. So thank you for taking a breath with me today. Thank you for showing up as love. Thank you for being the love that you are. All is well. Namaste. Whoa. <laughs> oh my, that was beautiful, 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 beautiful. Thank you, Kit.